Nestle girl, it's Wednesday, which means ain't nothing come on TV last night, which means this is our substitute makeup day. I know I'm late with the Love and Hip Hop New York review. I chose to watch Wags over Love and Hip Hop New York, thinking that Wags was going to be better, and I made a mistake. Nonetheless, it's our substitute fill-in day, and let's get into this last episode of Love and Hip Hop New York. Is it me? Or did y'all find it odd how that was that song that Remy Ma had did with Lil' Kim? But child, y'all didn't see any glimpse of Lil' Kim on Love and Hip Hop. That would have been great. I would have loved to have just at a minimum seen Lil' Kim walk past. But I guess for whatever reason, Lil' Kim does not want to affiliate whatever is left of her brand with this show and rightfully so she's an icon and it you know if the day comes where kim has to do love and hip-hop it'll be one of those days where it's her last resort so i get why we probably didn't see kim i wish we would have though just just for the culture just for the culture um cayenne when Jaquay brought Cayenne to sit down and talk with Brittany, I was liking Cayenne up until this episode. Uh, I sang Cayenne praises on all the other videos. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. I just can't fuck with Cayenne. I think she is um, reckless. I think she's reckless. And I'm not even going to attempt to be a psychologist on this and try to figure out why. She feels the need to go to places that she went. Now, don't get me wrong. I always tell y'all, you can't do wrong to a motherfucker and tell them how mad to get. But at a certain point in time, you got to be able to live with yourself with some of the shit you say out your mouth to people. And going in, why did it, the, the question I have for Cayenne is, why did it mean so much to you to hurt her so bad to go there with her dying grandmother? Like, that shit just wasn't cool. And my, while you may have won the battle, you lost the war. Because not everybody looking at you like you slimy. Then, not to mention, you show up to uh, wherever they at. St. Croix, St. Lucia. Jaquay brings you to the table. So, supposedly, you surprised him that to spend time with him. But you end up getting so turned up and crunk. Like, I'm sorry, y'all around here thinking that y'all gonna get on Love and Hip Hop to propel y'all careers, and y'all fucking y'all careers up while moaning them over there winning, collecting checks on y'all asses because everybody is tuning in to see y'all acting a fool, but after that, it ain't nothing that can be done with that. The way the producers and the security people couldn't calm you down, and you running all on the sand and shit, you look like a fool. Like, y'all, we are in 2018. That was filmed in 2017. At what point, as black people, do we drop this whole I beat your ass culture? Okay, I talked crazy to you. You ran across the table and hit me. Now what? It don't change the fact that I talked crazy to you. It may prevent the person from doing it again, but you still look stupid and like you lack self-control and quite frankly, Y'all buy that bullshit if y'all want to about, oh, you know, hip-hop is hip-hop culture. Hip-hop culture is still a business ran by good old white folk. They will laugh, so on and so forth, but they'll, they will laugh at you and be like, yeah, yeah, hip-hop. And when they go behind closed doors at the, at the record labels, they'll be, oh, God, I don't know. She's a ticking time bomb. Should we really sign her? Oh, my God, that's how the shit go. You better wake up and learn something. Stay woke. Um, Richie Dollar's conversation with his mom, quiet as it's kept. Rich Dollar's mom is my favorite mom of all the reality TV moms. I think because she is, uh, you, you can see that the woman is educated. Her subjects and her verbs agree. She's not a gimmick. She's not a drunk. She's not a previous whore. She's not none of those things. Mama is real classy based. And she sees through Richie's bullshit and gives it to him raw. And I love her for that. Mama keep her hair pulled back in a nasty bun. And she know her son full of shit. Shit, at some point she must have been full of shit because she passed it down to him. Nevertheless, 
She calls Richie on his bullshit and she sees situations the way I see situations and that's why I fuck with Richie Dollars and his mom. Rich on some real shit. I know we laugh at you and your little stubby dick and all this other little stuff and you be trying to pretend like you go with all these women when you really go with all these men. But listen to me, daughter. Get your health in order. Like, stay on top of that health. We already know in, in, in um, black and Hispanic community how diabetes, you know, hypertension and all that stuff. Listen, we like laughing at you and that little dick. We need you to be here. We don't need what little piece of dick you got left to be amputated because you got the sugar. Okay? You can't be part of the creep squad and you got an amputated foot. It ain't nothing sexy about a cute man with a little dick in a wheelchair. It just, with a wheelchair with a missing leg over something that could have been prevented. Okay? People in wheelchairs is cute too, but... I just think you too tall to be in the wheelchair. Then, you know, you only got about this much dick. So, I need you to be fully functional because I can't, well, not me because I don't want it. But who the people who do want it can't get to it if it's in a wheelchair. You see what I'm saying? So, Rich, we praying for you. We praying for you. Get it together and keep it together. Ken, that conversation that Jaquay had with you on the bed. When he was trying to get you together about your behavior the day before. And you were like, basically, you in here coming down to me. What you want me to do? Just be the bigger person? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want you to just be the bigger person. Here's the shit y'all hoes don't understand about being the bigger person. And here's how you know it's a straight up maturity thing. You can tell you don't prioritize your business over your feelings. And people always talk about this lack self-control and I just came and I get so mad and I boil over. Now, when I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, them people ain't teach me nothing about behavioral sciences. But I know enough about the world to know this. There was a old lady. This is what she told me. Yes. There is a demographic of people out there who have behavioral and mental issues who cannot control themselves. That is not the overwhelming majority of hood people. What we are seeing on TV and what we're experiencing is hood culture. Y'all have been indoctrinated and socially conditioned to believe that every time somebody says something to you that you do not like, you're supposed to hit them. Okay? That's part of the reason why I don't agree necessarily with spanking and whooping children. Will I whoop kids? Yes. Have I whooped kids? Yes. Do I try to make it my first go-to practice? No. And here is why. It sets the stage that whenever you are mad to correct the situation, you hit somebody. That's why I always say to parents, it is okay to spank your children and you should spank children. But you should never do it when you're mad. You should actually, you know, and I'm going to tell y'all something. Not to even make this a parenting situation. My dad rarely spanked us. But what I will give him credit for is when he did spank us, it was never immediately when some shit happened. We would do something. We wouldn't get that spanking about four or five hours later. You know what I'm saying? Because he called call us in the room explain what happened, then spank us. But when you hit somebody immediately after they do something wrong, a parent, you're angry, you're mad, it really does set the stage for what I call hood culture. The direct correlation is when I get mad or you make me mad, it's time for me to hit you. Listen, and it's just real talk. If it was Mona's ass, you wouldn't jump across the table and hit her. Why? Because you've got respect for Mona and you view Mona as somebody who can do something for your career. You've prioritized, I need this. I don't need that. You see what I'm saying? Without being able to see the forest from the trees. Y'all are on a much larger platform. You getting caught up in the right now and not paying attention to the what if and the later. You know what I'm saying? So you got to prioritize what it is you want. And if you know your goal is bigger than this bitch, then you're going to let a bitch upset you to be doing all of that. Like, mama, you did your proverbial pop off when you hit the white girl, when you tried to jump across the table to the white girl. You were supposed to get better. 
because you got the skills. Now you got this other thing out there that people got to now try to combat, which is, yes, she talented, but oh, do we want to deal with all this other stuff? You introduced that to your career. You came onto this show with a blank slate. Now your cutting up has overshadowed your rapping. So before we can even get to your rapping, you got to pull a K. Michelle. Yeah, you got talent, but what else you got? We, we, we need you to fix all that negative shit before we can even get to the talent. And shots out to K. Michelle for finally getting it. Um, speaking of, Remy Ma talking to Mariah. Quiet as it's kept, I don't think Remy and Mariah was going to ever do no damn song together anyway. I think it was just the show. Nevertheless, Remy Ma gave Mariah the same advice that I just gave Cayenne. You can't be sitting down cutting up, mama jumping all over the place fighting. And then Mariah, you really get caught up in some old dumbass, ignorant ass, hood, ghetto, projetic, inner city, low class, low socioeconomic status, drop out of high school, Brenda's got a baby, mama on crack type of shit. Which is, my friend is caught up in a one-on-one -on -one engagement with somebody else. Now I'm around here about to fight everybody in the streets over some shit that don't even got nothing to do with me. Just for you and Brittany to arrive at the same goddamn conclusion that you should have arrived that day one. Oh, this ain't got nothing to do with us. Let's be cool. At this point, I just rather you and Brittany keep on fighting to at least make good on all the time y'all wasted fighting for no damn reason. These people lack foresight. <clears throat> If you're going to jump into a beef that got nothing to do with you just to end up apologizing and being friends with the bitch six months later, you should have just been friends with the bitch six months prior. The outcome was the same and you'd have saved a whole lot of time, heartache, and embarrassment. You know what I'm saying? Friends right here getting y'all fucked up and embarrassed. I'm sorry. I ain't merging. I ain't mixing my business with nobody. And I ain't riding for no bitch to the extent in which it compromises what the fuck I got going on. And that's just true tea. A true friend, a loyal friend wouldn't want me to fuck up my business over they bullshit. And I'm sorry. If somebody ain't fuck your man, hit your child, steal your money, or slap you in the face, or cuss your mama the fuck out at Family Dollar, you ain't got no reason to be trying to fight them all in the streets, okay? There are very rare situations that call for physical violence. A bitch just talking, they can tongue wrestle all day long. They doing this all day long. But if it ain't really affecting your well-being and your, your health and your livelihood, let that shit go. Okay, let, let that bitch look crazy talking about you on that. You don't have to accept every invitation to every party you oh, you invited to. And that's just true tea. Okay, Rich and Jaquay conversation with the Creep Squad. First and foremost, I'm going to need Snoop name to stop coming up in the opening credits. Okay, she's not a main character. She's not even a friend of the show. She's that dyke over there. Okay, that dyke over there that pop up every now and again with the same outfits on. Okay, they need to upgrade Lil' Mo Man. Carl got Papoose got a bigger role than Snoop. So why is that lady man name coming up in the opening credits? It just irks my last nerve. Her name being the opening credits of episode she don't even be on. Like, child, she must have been over there eating the dog fuck out of Mona Puss. Yeah, y'all know Mona give you a last vote tea. Nonetheless. <clears throat> She on it. That's right, bitch. If you're going to eat the puss, you better eat the right puss. You see Johnny Blaze over there trying to eat the dog fuck out of Dale, trying to become the next Nicki Minaj. This ain't even that show. Let me stay over here on this network and in this time slot. Nonetheless, I will say this. I like the Safari, DJ Self, Jaquay, Snoop. Uh, Rich Dollars, when they all together, it gives me a Black Ink crew vibe. It gives me a Fat Albert and Friends vibe. You can tell they always going to be up to some mischief. And it's funny. It's fake. But because we know that's fake and it's designed to be like fake, it's fun. Kind of like Black Ink Crew. At least they're not fake and drama. They out there creeping. When them motherfuckers was playing hide and seek in Central Park and Cayenne looked and was like you know, what kind of game is this we play? That shit was hilarious. And it makes me feel good to see people in hip-hop having a light-hearted, good time. Like, quiet as it's kept, I would love to see Jay-Z, Snoop, 
uh, 50 Cent, Dr. Dre, all of them just getting tipsy somewhere, just having fun outside of the proverbial hip hop culture, which is we somewhere in a strip club with big booty bitches with weed smoke everywhere and Hennessy on the table. Like, I enjoy seeing y'all just being fun and goofy. I really do think there is something that can be done with that. Some sort of spinoff called the Creep Squad. The Creep Squad takes Miami. I would love to see them bitches go on a trip to Miami or Cabo or somewhere and they just cutting up. A three or four part episode of them just cutting up and getting into mischief that don't involve drama with a little bit of tears in the middle. Now, Mona, if y'all do the shit, I want my goddamn money, okay? Nonetheless, y'all, oh, bitch, I can't believe I forgot to talk about this. Anais, they call me Anais, say what, say what? I don't agree with some of Anais's methods, but I think I understand the source of Anais's frustration. Anais is the odd man out. And it is hard to penetrate a group of people that you do not know, who've got years of history with one another, who've got more perceived popularity and power than you do, and you feel like they're picking on you. So a lot of people, rather than succumbing to that and playing the docile role, they play up the, you gonna make me the odd man out, so let me play that up to the fullest. And I feel like that's what Anais did in that bathing suit scene last week in an effort to try to just show that I'm part of this group. I can be a popular member that carries the situation and it backfired on her. I totally agree with Anais though, when she came to that table and then they started going down that road about Jaquay and her being in the room and she walked off. Cause what she was feeling at that time is, y'all already have made me the butt of y'all jokes. I see where this is going. You trying to make me the butt of y'all jokes again and I'm just not with it. And I'm not gonna lie to you. I really do think Jaquay is lying when he talking about Anae showed him her punani. Okay, uh, for one, cause she ain't got one. That's number one. You see what I'm saying? So Jaquay, we over here side eyeing you. The fact that you allowed um, uh, T.S. and I.E.S. to take her clothes off in front of you, bitch. You knew what was down there. Yes. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Aw, oh, kitty, kitty. Okay. Stop trying to pull it, Donkey Kong. Nevertheless, um, and I E.S. say she mad with that shit. And I totally understand it. And I E.S. my advice to you, mama, you there. Rock out, you there. You gotta let them hoes know, bitch. I'm on the same motherfucking platform y'all ass is on. So, bitch, ain't nobody better than nobody because we all here. And with that being said, Jaquay, stop lying on that lady dick and on yours. And I'll call you later, Nessa Girl. Bye.